Hi, welcome to the Reaper blog. In this video, I'll show you how I integrate old hardware effects like these into my digital audio workstation, Reaper. We'll talk about why I like these effects, how I integrate them, and some special things you can do inside of Reaper to get more from your old hardware devices. So the actual equipment that I use, that I have here, is not really that important. It's more, I want to show the concept of, of taking this older equipment that may be, you know, unwanted, but still useful uh, in some contexts, and, uh, and getting some more use out of it. Maybe you bought this years ago, maybe you found a good deal on something, maybe you just want to have some hands-on control over hardware. For me, this is the best way that I have found to integrate this stuff with Reaper. But the actual hardware that I'm using is an old Alesis MIDI Verb 3 and a TC Electronic G Sharp. They're both multi effects units, reverbs, delays, and modulation effects. This will apply to any sort of hardware delay or reverb uh, modulation effect, even compressors, EQs, and stuff like that. You can integrate some of this stuff in there as well. How I'm getting from Reaper into these devices and back is through an M Audio Profire 2626. This is a, an old Firewire interface, but it actually works as a standalone mic preamp with eight inputs and eight outputs, and it just automatically outputs whatever comes in on the inputs through the ADAT port to the analog outputs, and whatever is coming in on the analog inputs goes to the digital outputs over the light pipe cable, which is then going into my AudioFuse interface from Archuria. Two light pipe cables go into that, and then I've got up to eight uh, analog cables coming out and eight analog cables coming in to the Profile 2626. And there are many other devices that will support this sort of function. Or if you have a larger interface that has like eight inputs or more, then you can connect these devices directly. In addition to the audio connections, I also have MIDI connections for these devices so that I can send program changes to them and change the presets from Reaper, which is pretty cool. It saves me having to remember it when I load up a session much later. I've got these three devices in a rack. You don't have to do that. You can have them spread across your studio if you want. You can have them on your floor. You can have them in your fridge. But the audio connections are going to be the same. I have them set up in this rack so that I can just turn a little bit and I can see the displays. I can see all the knobs. I can. They're within arm's reach, and I really like that. I've had them in front of me, I've had them off to the side, I've had them below the desk before. This is the best way for me. The reason I'm using these old devices is simply just because I have them. I had them in a rack uh, under my desk for many years as a footrest, and so I wanted something a little bit better for them. They're old, but I find them still useful. How about some benefits of old hardware racks? There's a lot of these out there that are inexpensive and still sound great. I find the hands-on control versus using plugins much more convenient and, and much quicker to find good sounds um, or, or sounds that I can, uh, sounds that are at least a starting point and I can move on to digital processing after the fact. I like knowing that if I send sound in, it's gonna come back the same way every single time. I can move this whole setup to another computer and it's just gonna work the same way because all, it's all analog connections or, or ADAT connections. As long as I have a device that can send ADAT in and out, then it's useful for me. In terms of accessing this hardware from Reaper, here's how that looks. I set up a couple track templates that get my, my effects set up correctly. First of all, I have a Recontrol MIDI plugin. We're gonna come back to that one later, but the most important part, the part that sends the signals out is the Reinsert plugin. This is one of the stock plugins in Reaper. Basically, this is like a digital patch bay. It, this can see all the physical connections on your hardware, and then uh, you can reroute things, you can choose what gets sent where, and uh, this sends audio and MIDI and receives on the same track, which is really cool. In addition to that, it has latency compensation built in. Once you have the connections, once you save a preset for this plugin, it's simply like loading up a plugin, and it just works, it's very convenient. So for the G-sharp, I have that on ADAT 7 and 8 going out of my audio fuse. It's coming back in on ADAT 7 and 8. I like to keep those pairs the same just for convenience. 
And I'm also sending on MIDI channel three. I'm just gonna grab a random drum loop so we can add some effects to this and, uh, and see how this sounds. Okay, so let's take this one and I'm gonna put this, uh, actually I'm gonna put this on its own track. And then I'm going to create a send from this track into the G sharp track. So we're just gonna have this effect in parallel. I've got this set up so that the, the G sharp is uh, sending a uh, wet signal only. And I've even got it set up so I can change presets from Reaper. So I'm just gonna jump to preset nine. And 18. or I can bypass the presets. And now it's going to be where the knobs are set. There's some pretty nice effects in that box. And for a zero CPU load reverb, that's pretty nice. So that's the G sharp, and I have the same setup for the MIDI Verb 3. For the MIDI Verb 3 track, I've got Recontrol MIDI again and Reinsert. So in this case, output five and six from the M audio goes to the uh, input of the MIDI Verb 3, and then the stereo output goes back to the Profiler 2626, which then goes through the ADAT cable into Reaper. So I'll create a send to this track, and, uh, and the G sharp track is bypassed right now. And if I play this, and as you can see here, I've got a list of presets. And you can see as I change the presets, the number here is changing. And I still have control over the volume or the mix or any of the values can be changed here. Edit, uh, edit two, decay time. I'm gonna increase the decay time. And all these effects take up no CPU, which is really great. Now let's talk about the MIDI connections. I'm sending one MIDI cable from my audio fuse into the MIDI Verb 3. MIDI Verb 3 has an output and a through port. I'm using the through port to go into the TC Electronic rack mount, which only has an input and an output. The difference between a through port and an out port is that the through port gets a copy of the input where the output only outputs new data. So with that connection, one cable, one MIDI cable going from the audio fuse to the Alesis, then the through port goes to the TC input. And with that, I can do things like setting the delay times, I can send the patch changes, and that's mainly what's going on with that connection. Back to looking at Reaper, I'll just quickly show you what my MIDI devices setup is like. I've got my uh, MIDI output here, which is the, I've got a lot of devices here, but the, the one that I'm using here is Arturia Audio Fuse. I've enabled the output and I'm sending clock to that device. That's it for the output. I don't have anything coming back in. You may notice these ReControl MIDI plugins. There's a, a stock Reaper plugin. This is uh, just a great way to integrate hardware. You can send control changes, and in this case, I can send bank or program select changes. And I made my own rebank files. You can actually find a lot of rebank files on the Reaper stash. 
in this case, I made my own by just taking uh, the preset list and formatting it for the rebank files. I think it's really worth doing if you've got some hardware effects that you want to control through MIDI. It's going to be under the data folder, rebank, and in here, here's my Elisa's MIDI Verb 3 rebank, and I'm going to open this up with a basic text editor. So I'm just using kind of the, the template rebank file. I've set this up so that bank one is the MIDI Verb 3 factory preset effects, and this is what you see labeled here under the bank name. And then we've got the whole list of presets. Um, I happened to find someone that had named all the presets. There was just a file I could download or copy and paste from online of the, the full list of names. And then all I had to do here was add in the numbers. So 000 is chorus reverb delay EQ, and that's patch zero on that device. So it's just a list from zero to 98 in this case. Now the TC one is a little bit different. This one actually doesn't have named presets. Um, I couldn't find anywhere there was a list of named presets. And the other thing is that the preset numbers start at one, not at zero, zero. I'm sending the program change zero, zero to go to patch zero, one. So depending on the gear, if it has a MIDI connection, uh, there's probably bank program change you can do and you can uh, name those so that they appear in here as sort of like a preset list. And as you choose this, uh, there's maybe a one second delay before it actually sends that. Another way I can send program changes is through the bank program select uh, section of the MIDI editor. So here I've got this going back to preset one. It's currently on preset nine as the project plays. And so I can hit play here. and there we saw it change. Well, that's it. Pretty neat, right? Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog on Patreon and visit reaper.blog for more tutorials.